The history of any country is always bound with unrevealed secrets, sacred places and riddles which scientists have been trying to solve for decades. Kazakhstan is an ancient land. Its history keeps a lot of glorious names, events and facts, some of which are still covered with myths and legends. The Time Puzzle crew tries to understand the intricacies of ancient and modern mysteries of history, traveling around the country and visiting its most amazing corners. In this episode, Toys of Ancient Nomads and Mystical Magic of Dolls. The life of the nomads has always been difficult and dangerous. Wars, crossings across the steppe, a heavy life. All this undoubtedly influenced the culture of the Kazakhs. Nomadic way of life did not assume the presence of a large number of belongings. So the ancient nomads had only all the most necessary stuff. Yurts, weapons, some dishes and clothes and they use such a practical approach in any sphere of life, including in the children's education. Nomads could not afford many children's toys, so they had just a few, but each one played an important, even sacred role. In general, a number of legends, mysterious stories, and even magical incidents relate to toys. So what, in fact, are toys? But did not you, when you were a child, haven't you ever wanted to close the door and find out how your toys live? Why doll is considered a conductor between the worlds of the living and the dead. Those dolls, they usually either did not have a face or they had just a cross instead of a face. Should we accept presents from sorcerers? That voodoo sorcerer gave me such a doll. Can dolls become alive? She asked questions that made me believe that this paper doll had acquired a personality. What is a doll for people? A toy or a magical object? Watch all this right now. The world of toys is full of secrets and mysteries. Many researchers believe that they appeared together with humankind. Toys were used for different purposes. Children played with them, they were put on the graves of the deceased, magical rites were performed with the help of dolls. My name is Andrei Slozhin, you are watching the Time Puzzle, and today we are going to learn a lot of interesting and mysterious from the world of toys. Let's start with a doll which was created hundreds of years ago in the boundless steppes of Kazakhstan. OTK is not a simple toy, but musical one. Hundreds of years ago, performances with OTK gathered a lot of viewers. This is a very ancient art, so scientists carefully examine it. One of them is socio-anthropologist and UNESCO expert on intangible cultural heritage, Yafrat Imambek. We must say about the oldest we must say about the oldest puppet, puppet and musical art of Oteke. Oteke is an ancient figure of a goat, which dances on a special pedestal, performs movements accompanied by Dombra. And more than that, the Dombrist plays Kui. There are special Oteke Kuis. And the figure stands in front of Kui Shi, regardless of him, it dances on this pedestal. It beats the beat with its hooves. However, such a Dombra playing with a dancing goat was not just for fun. As historians have established, this rite had a more sacred significance. It was performed before going on a hunt. It was believed that this rite would attract good luck. The very word or take care well. Teke is clear, it's a goat, a mountain goat. Why or teke? There are three possible meanings. First, it means pit, or teke, right? Or is a trap, a pit trap, a hunting trap. Also, or is snares. That is, the goat was jumping and it got into the snares, and they made this toy. This is a hunting cult to ensure that success attended the hunt. 
Many tribes of the Stone Age practice similar rituals with dolls, dancers, scarecrows or images of animals before the hunt. It is enough only to recall the rock paintings where fragments of hunting are depicted. People believed that the spirit of the forest would see such actions and he certainly will send them prey. Later, as the researchers suggest, children began to play with the totemic animal figures and later they were used in performances. Already a thousand years ago, people learned to make compound dolls. This is evidenced by archaeological finds. Here's what Larissa Sologub, the puppeteer, told us. The doll that was found, and it is considered the world's oldest doll, it is a wooden hinge doll. By the way, all parts of its body can move. It was found on the territory of Greece, and it is more than 6,000 years old. However, such a statement is not entirely true. The first toy, which was the beginning of the official history of the dolls, was found not in Greece, but in the Czech Republic. It was in 1891, when the workers carried out the repair works of sewage in the city of Brno. At the depth of four and a half meters, there was discovered the grave of a hunter. There was a huge number of mammoth skins, tools and hunting, as well as a human figure carved from a mammoth bones. Surprisingly, it was a real puppet. As the researchers established, the approximate age of the find was 28,000 years. Various assumptions on its purpose were made, including magic rituals before hunting, spoiling or ceremonies that helped to heal. There is still no exact answer. Nevertheless, the doll from Bruno is considered the first discovered ancient toy. And dolls, by the way, have always been conductors between the world of the living and the world of the dead. Because a doll was endowed with immortality, because it was inanimate, so it was endowed with the property of immortality. You take some piece of cloth and some stick, and voila, your doll is ready. What does the doll represent? The first thing, it is a teacher. It teaches both children and adults but most likely that it teaches adults. Because a doll, it belongs to some particular person. Well, and it transmits the inner world of that person. And when you stand in the store, now we have plenty of these dolls, there are a lot of them in the store. And when you stand in front of the doll, why do you choose one and pass the second one? Because each doll has its own share of the soul of the master who made it. The doll performs several functions. The first function, which is widely known, is a socializing function. That is, playing with dolls, the child learns adult activities, the types of adult human activity. A doll is an imitator. Of course, the doll has an entertaining function because kids play with dolls. And in the process of playing, the child learns an adult life. Of course, this is the main goal of the game with dolls. But as it turned out, toys help a person cope with other tasks. A psychologist and fairy tale therapist, Yulia Dyakova, knows everything about this. Originally, dolls were probably made so that a person could get rid of loneliness in some way, so that he could tell his doll about his sorrows, about his troubles, maybe about his successes. A human, always, throughout life, was accompanied by a variety of dolls. If a woman gave birth to a baby, she had a special doll that helped in childbirth. If a husband went to war or to some kind of military campaign, his wife always gave him a doll charm, which protected him from death. It could be made from the bottom of her skirt. It could be made from an apron. If someone from adult members of the family was ill, they also made a special doll, which was then burned. It could be made from spikes or maybe cloth too. A doll is one of the first signs of human civilization, generally of human culture, because only a human plays with dolls. Animals can play some sort of game activity, but none of the animals creates dolls for the game. A person does this. 
Therefore, we can say that the doll is a sign of humanity, a sign of human culture. As for dolls, as toys, there is the word oinshik in the Kazakh language. The etymology of oinshik, it comes from oyen, or game. And if you dig deeper, oi, it means fictional, that is, that exists only in the mind. It turns out that playing this kind of unpretentious figure, the child developed his imagination. His imagination was not limited with any borders. It could be a beautiful girl, a bartir, an evil sorcerer, or a good old man. In fact, the tricky part of such faceless dolls, and they usually either did not have a face or had just a cross instead of a face, which symbolized the sun. These dolls, they gave a very large scope to the imagination. And through the imagination, through inventing the game, its subjects, the child developed. And it was not only a child, it could be grown-up girls for marriage, who also played some of their stories. And so they could build their lives, their storyline, invent what they want and not play some imposed plots. Modern psychologists call this practice life programming. As it turned out, the ancient people also actively used such techniques. Most likely, it was just a native ability, because in antiquity there was no psychology nor psychotherapists and generally, some toys appeared purely by a chance. They took a piece of leather and threw it into the fire, in the ashes. The piece of leather was charred in such a way that it took some definite shape. And this figure it was actually the doll, Cool Shark. Kids could play with it, they could dress it up. But more often, such a cool shark, it was used as an imitator of a man, or a woman, or a child. Cool shark or cool ra shark, it was some kind of animal, either fantastic or usual. It all depended on the imagination of the player. This way of making dolls was not the only one for the nomads. Of course, they carved dolls from wooden bones. Animal figurines were also placed on burial mounds. It was believed that the spirit of the animal would help the deceased in the next world. Another protector or guardian of the deceased was also stone sculptures. They can also be called a prototype of dolls. Globally speaking, all these sculptures, they can be regarded as dolls. Balbals are the images of spirits. And why this simple, unprocessed stone, why does it cause such interest? After all, its aesthetic value is not formidable. But cultural significance is great. Why? Because they consider Balbal as an intermediary between this world and the world of the spirits the world of the departed. And they come to such Balbal, they worship this Balbal, they ask for protection from that Balbal. But not from the Balbal itself, but precisely from those spirits that it personifies. There were various materials for making dolls, branches and hay, scraps of cloth, stones, bones and much more. The puppeteer Tatiana Semenova told us about this. The most accessible material of that time was everything you could find under your feet. Later people started to invest more in it, as they say, they pursued such a goal that the doll could be kept longer. Such materials as straw, it is short-lived. They began to make dolls from clay, from porcelain. It was improving throughout the time. However, initially ritual dolls were made from materials that were sacred to particular people. Otike was made of wood. The trunk of the goat was one piece. Mobile, complex-shaped limbs and a head were attached to it. They were connected by strings of veins or intestines of animals. 
When the figure was ready, it was placed on a wooden or metal movable pin. A thin string was tied to it. The musician put the other end of the string on the finger. During auto care performances, fairy tales were told. We know that there were masters in the early 20th century. They were so skilled, one performer could control eight dolls at a time. Can you imagine that kind of skill? It was also important what kind of wood was used for making such a dancing goat. According to the Kazakhs, each tree had its sacred meaning. It was believed that the tree is a conductor through three worlds, the lower, upper and middle. And for Kazakhs, such a conductor tree was a poplar. According to another version, the goat could have been made from juniper, or as it is also called archar, since this plant was considered sacred among shamans and baksi. In any case, both trees were endowed with magical properties, which means that the figure that was carved out of them possessed the ability to rule over all three worlds. Of course, Urteke is a masterpiece of the intangible cultural heritage of Kazakhstan. Your humble servant initiated its entry into the national list of intangible cultural heritage. Let's hope that it will be included in the representative list of UNESCO. It is difficult to say when people began to ascribe magical properties to dolls, but in literature, stories and legends there are many examples where the doll was alive and could help a person. And it was the other way around. It represented a mortal danger for the main character. Dolls were often given magical and mystical properties. And again, if we talk about the past, then when a person dies, they make the doll, as in his memory. And people were afraid of this doll. They consulted with this doll. This doll was always fed. It was given a lot of honors. And while well, the family always knew when the doll was angry, and they always tried to carry out the orders that the doll gave. For example, through dreams or through some objects, things and signs. It is possible that because of such beliefs, a huge number of terrible legends about dolls that could harm their owner were born. One of the most famous is the history of Anna Bell. The doll was given to a student, Donna, by her mother in 1970. According to Donna, she noticed that she leaves the doll in one place and discovers in another. At first, the girl thought that it was the jokes of her neighbor but soon noticed that there was blood on the doll's dress. The girl asked a medium for help. She established that the spirit of the seven-year-old Annabelle Higgins had settled into the doll. The medium claimed that the spirit just liked Donna and did not mind living next to her. The student took pity on the doll and left it at home until the doll was jealous of the young man who appeared at Donna's. As noted in the reports of the famous explorers of the paranormal phenomena, Adam Lorraine Warren, the young man said that in his dreams the doll strangled him. In the morning he found traces of claws on his body. During the investigation, the Warren couple found that the demon had moved into the doll and its purpose was the soul of its owner. The Warrens seized the doll and placed it in a glass cabinet, where it remains still and maybe it is waiting for the moment to get out. We are always confronted with mysticism, that our dolls jump from place to place all the time. But did not you, when you were a child, haven't you ever wanted to close the door and find out how your toys live, what is behind the door? A little doll was sitting in the exhibition on the windowsill and every time it tried to jump from this windowsill. And I called to the author of this doll, she lives in the city of Rida, and I asked her, listen, it's so jumpy, it always tries to jump somewhere. She said, you know, while I was making it, I caught it six times. That is, she says, it always tried to fly somewhere. And generally this doll was the first which was bought and they took it for good money. And we were very glad that the doll had left. But the most interesting thing is that this collector tells us it keeps jumping from the windowsill constantly.
It is your choice. Believe in such supernatural possibilities of the dolls or not, you should decide it for yourself, as well as for the magical rituals of African witches voodoo. Our friend, a real scientist, Yafrat Imambek, once met a representative of this cult and even received a mysterious gift from him. That voodoo sorcerer whom I met, I will not tell you everything, but an important element, of course, is the doll. He also has dolls for all occasions. This voodoo sorcerer gave me such a doll. That is, it's such a piece of wood. It has the eyes, the eyes are slightly marked. It is wrapped with such a tarred string. But it has neither hands nor feet, but a very wide open mouth. And there's a peg at the end of this string. And he said to me, if you are going somewhere for a trip, or you are about to start a big business, you will tell this doll what you are going to do and then shut its mouth with this peg. And while your journey or your mission is not successfully completed, you do not take this peg out. That is, you cannot tell a secret. And so such a doll is a guardian of secret. It prevents your enemies from finding out about your plans and becoming your anathema to success. The voodoo originates in West Africa. The main idea of this cult is, of course, a doll. In the usual sense of the average person, this is a certain figure which is put under some spell and then various rituals are held. The most common is the insertion of sharp objects into the doll. Africans believe that by doing this it is possible to harm the enemy. However, this ritual can be conducted only by experienced sorcerers, since if something goes wrong, then all these actions will return to that person who did it. The effect of influence on a person with the help of a doll was not proved by scientific world, but a large number of Africans believe in these legends and necessarily burn their hair and nails after they have been cut so they cannot be used by voodoo sorcerers. They take some rags, nails, human hair, and then something like a stick rag is made. All this is wrapped with certain spells and meditations. And if you believe in it accordingly, of course, you can do something like this. A voodoo doll is not the only example of using toys as magic items. The Japanese, for example, believe that there are dolls that can fulfill fantasies. A famous Japanese doll, Daruma, you have to paint over its one eye to make a wish come true. And only after the desire comes true, the second eye can be also painted. The Daruma doll looks like a tilting doll. A distinctive feature of each doll is the presence of a beard and the absence of pupils. As a rule, the ritual of making wishes is done for a new year. If the desire does not come true, the doll should be taken to the temple, burned and then you should buy a new one. And so it repeats until the desire will come true. It is believed that such a ride symbolizes not the rejection of a dream, but the search for its realization in another way. Unlike witches, master puppeteers never use human hair to create their works. Either this is an unspoken rule or the belief that a doll can adopt the qualities of a hair host. However, it is worth mentioning that the doll can still influence the person of magic and witchcraft. I saw it myself. Doll therapy. This is the whole branch of the art therapy. There is a whole area of psychodrama when a person transfers some of his inner feelings to a doll. Let's play with a napkin. I'll show you. It looks very interesting. Look, the simplest doll can be made as a stress regulator. Look, we just fold it and make some image. Andre, here, make it so it looks like a person. We are making a doll. The doll now, it will be a part of you. And try to give it some male properties, so it looks more like a man. Do you mean it is not important what man exactly looks like? Absolutely right. Do it as you wish. A man should have broad shoulders. And what else? And contracted pelvis. 
That is, you have just made a doll. Now try to give a name to this doll. Anything. What did they call you in your childhood? Well, I had different by names. Does this have to be my name? No, it's not necessary. To the surprise of the whole crew, despite the skepticism, the host talked with a psychologist for a long time and did it through the doll. This conversation has better to be left behind because it turned out to be too personal. But for the sake of justice, we still show the result which was summed up by our interlocutor. We've just learned some very interesting and maybe too personal information about Andre. But on the other hand, it is very important and we talked with a living person through the doll. The person that we know about, that he is interested in new projects. We know that this person is outspoken, that he is a man of principle, because even his intonation changed slightly when we were talking, and in this way the animation of the doll takes place. Someone will say that this experiment is nothing more than a good work of a psychologist with a man, and he will be right. A lot depended on Yulia. She asked questions that made me believe that this paper doll had acquired a personality. Perhaps this is another explanation why the dolls were considered alive. It is known for sure that in ancient times, the function of psychologists was carried out by shamans. However, on the territory of Kazakhstan, dolls as a cult was not widely distributed. They were just toys. The Kazakh girls did not have such a quivering attitude towards the doll, so that they carried it with them all day long. That is, she played with it, dropped it, then made a new one. Only later such an attitude appeared that they started to keep these dolls and so on. It acquired some artistic value and a personal evaluation. I do not know about such things. I have never heard that in the Kazakh culture, dolls were kept. Those few toys of the ancient nomads that survived were mostly for boys. This was the beginning of the education of the Jigit, the future warrior. And accordingly, the boys' toys were appropriate. There are much more toys for boys. These are toys that imitate adult activity. First, Al Shamai. That is, it is a wooden horse which is popular everywhere. A horse is a toy of the nomads. When a little child was just beginning to walk, he was immediately put on Al Shamai, so that he learned to sit in the saddle. According to historians, a rocking horse appeared in Greece in the 5th century BC. Later in Europe, it was used not only as a toy but also as a simulator for riding training. These were toys for rich children. The future English King Charles I had such a horse when he was a child. His father, Jacob I, greatly promoted such entertainment of his son. There are playing bows that imitate weapons. These are toys that imitate guns, Ashibka. There are toys that imitate guns, well, military or hunting guns. There are toy knives, well, generally, there are toy knives, well, generally, they are weapons. However, there is much less evidence left about toys for girls. It is known that in the culture of nomads, special attention was paid to children. Life in the steppe was full of dangers. A person had to be strong and independent beginning from childhood. Therefore, the nomads raised their offspring in severity. Nevertheless, children have always been children. The earliest descriptions that I had to read were the end of the 19th and early 20th century, made by the Russian researcher Karuts, who traveled here in Central Asia and in Jatesu. He described the nomadic way of life, and he has a chapter about children, about Kazakh children, how they used to play. He said that these were very lively children, and they played a lot of mobile games. The teenagers gathered together, sang songs, made riddles, 
told all kinds of legends about beautiful girls and courageous bartes. Swayed on a swing, the Alti Baka. Such gatherings allow children and adolescents to socialize. For sure, during talking, the girls were making dolls for their younger sisters, and the guys practiced playing Dombra and controlling the toy or take care. Few people know, but for the Turkic people, hunting for a mountain goat or rather hoofed animal was strictly regulated. People believed that it was the symbol of the middle world, the messenger of Tengri, the spirit of the steppes and mountains. It was believed that thoughtless hunting can harm not only nature but also humankind. The nomads have one interesting legend about this. It tells about the young hunter Kulame again who killed mountain goats in dozens. One day a white Tautike came to his mother's house and told the woman that if her son killed at least yet another animal, their house would be filled with misfortune. The next morning the mother told about her dream to Kulame again and tried to dissuade him from going hunting. But the guy did not listen to her and went on the road. Soon he met a beautiful white mountain Tauteke. The hunter shot it, the animal fell. He skinned the carcass and prepared a dinner from meat. Having eaten, the guy went to bed. The next morning he saw the unharmed white goat. According to some researchers, the dance that performs the Oteke tells just this legend. There is another version. Once there lived a strong shaman who had a totem, a mountain goat, and the first toy Oteke appeared when the shaman tried to deceive the deaf. Legend says that he managed to do it. The shaman achieved eternal life because he was locked in the figure of a wooden goat for perpetuity. I believe that there are souls in dolls. It's not their soul, it's the soul of the master. When a person makes something, he tries to transmit his mood, his energy. But when we are working on the doll, how to say it? We shouldn't do it while being sad or mad, because then the result of work will be unpleasant. The dolls became available literally quite recently. That is, literally 100, 120 years ago, dolls have become a toy for children. Previously, these were works of great importance. Those real puppet masters were appreciated everywhere, because they were the cleverest people. You had to know quite a lot in order to make a doll. First, you need to know the anatomy, how a person is built, how he moves, what he can do, what the doll should do. And accordingly, all that knowledge, it accumulates in every person and as a result, you get a doll. With each doll, you improve as a master. Not only as a master, but as a person. But the most interesting thing I noticed is how many years I've been working and the more dolls of different masters I see, the more I understand that this or that master feels. The subject of dolls and toys is so extensive that it requires careful study. Nevertheless, since childhood, dolls have become our first friends and helpers. With their help, we learned about the world, we understood what was good and what was bad. Games with dolls teach us kindness and justice. Through the dolls, we learn the history and traditions of the people. Toy Oteke is an obvious example of this. This dance contains a huge layer of people's culture. People which lived in the boundless steppes and near the mountain peaks of Kazakhstan. A doll occupies a special place in Kazakh traditional culture. A special place different from all other cultures. That is, it is a very thin, uneasy place. No doubt, the dolls are treated differently. Someone thinks they are just toys. Someone believes that they are the keepers of welfare and peace in a house. And someone is afraid of them, believing that the dolls are watching them. In fact, the master achieves such an effect by the correct lending and drawing of the toy's eyes. There is no mysticism here. 
This mysticism, it is inside of us, in our history, in our sacred relation to our ancestors. My name is Andrei Slojin. It was the Time Puzzle. See you.